Hello, I'm Dr. George Gaskin from Testimonial Cathedral Church of God in Christ, and we this is the first installment of our series leading up to Pentecost Sunday. And we're going to be talking about receiving the Holy Ghost today. And uh, for those of you that are unfamiliar with that, we'll read a scripture that uh, everyone uses in conjunction with the first coming of the Holy Spirit. We want you to understand that the Spirit came on the day of Pentecost, and that's why many churches that believe in the gift of speaking in tongues are called Pentecostal churches. The word Pentecost simply means 50, and it came 50 days after Easter. We find our scripture in the book of Acts chapter two, and I'm gonna begin reading at verse one. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. We're going to stop right there at verse 4 and talk about receiving the Holy Ghost. All you have to do to receive it is ask for it. It is a gift from God. In days past, uh, we used to have what we call tarrying services. And we got that word tarrying, which simply means to wait, because Jesus told the disciples to go to Jerusalem and tarry or go to Jerusalem and wait until they were endowed with power from on high, until they received the Holy Ghost. But we realize that we don't have to tarry because the Holy Ghost is already here. And we use that term for many years that we were gonna have a tarry service, which led many people to believe that we were still waiting on the Holy Ghost to come but the Holy Ghost is already here, so we don't tarry anymore. And all one need do in order to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost is ask for it, is ask for it. Let's look at the scripture. They were all in one place with one accord. Their focus was on God. Their focus was on the promise that Jesus had given to them. And so when you want to receive the Holy Ghost or to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, all you have to do is ask God for it. Now, the Holy Ghost does not come upon unclean lives, but He comes upon clean lives. So the first thing that you have to do is repent of your sins and be converted. Now you are a candidate to receive the Holy Ghost. And then after that, all you need do is ask for it. But let me take one step back and say that you've given your heart to God, but your life needs to be clean. You need to be living a clean life. You can't have any of those old habits hanging around and think that God is going to come and, and dwell in an unclean temple. So you need to do what the scripture says, and that is sanctify yourself, and the very God of peace will sanctify you wholly. W-H-O-L-L-Y, meaning he will sanctify you completely, but you begin the work of sanctification yourself. You begin to lay aside, as Paul told us in Hebrews, lay us, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that does so easily beset us and let us run with patience, patience of this race that is set before us. So we must begin the process of getting ourselves cleaned. And once we begin that process, now the Holy Spirit can come in and can indwell you with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. Don't let anyone tell you that you can receive it without speaking in other tongues. That is the evidence that the Holy Spirit has taken up residence in you is that he will speak in an unknown tongue to announce his presence. And again, I say all you have to do is ask for it. If you're living a clean life, if you're, if you're giving your life to Christ and you're living a clean life, just ask the Lord, fill me with your Holy Spirit. That's all you have to do, and He will fill you. We look in the 10th chapter of the book of Acts, and we see Cornelius. When Peter went down to Cornelius' house, the Holy Ghost fell upon them. Why? 
he, Cornelius had been told to go and get Peter and he would tell them what they needed to do. So they were hungry for the infilling of the Spirit. They wanted to be filled with the Spirit. They obeyed the command to go and, and uh, get Peter and they got Peter and he came and the scripture says that the Holy Ghost fell upon them. And then they got baptized in water because the scripture continues to say that can we forbid water to those upon whom the Holy Ghost has already fallen. So we need to have our mind on God. We need to have a clear and clean life. And we need to have a hunger for God in order to receive his Holy Spirit. And so we need to be obedient and, and single, singleness of mind. They were in one place with one accord. That means that everybody was minding the same thing. Everyone was thinking about the same thing. There were no distractions. So when you are asking God to fill you with his Holy Spirit, you don't need any distractions. You need to be wholly focused on receiving his Holy Spirit. And once you've done that, he'll come in and he will fill you. Doesn't necessarily take you years or months to receive it, but once you have gotten your temple in such a position that you are clean and that you are what we call sanctified, the Holy Spirit will come and the Holy Spirit will indwell you and he will evidence his being there by speaking in other tongues. So we are moving toward Pentecost Sunday. We want you to have a full understanding of what Pentecost is about. We want you to have a full understanding of what the Holy Ghost, who the Holy Ghost is, and how he will indwell you and fill you if you prepare yourself. We look at God and, and all that God does. God always has a preparatory period before he begins to move. He prepares his people for his next move. Jesus, before he left, he blew on his disciples and said to them, receive ye the Holy Ghost. Now they didn't receive it right then, but that was the preparation for them to be able to receive. And when they obeyed, and the key word here is obeyed, when they obeyed and went to Jerusalem and waited and had their mind on him and their mind on the, on the promise that he had made to them, then suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and cloven tongues, that means divided tongues, the little, little divided tongues of fire came in the room and sat upon each of them and they began to speak in tongues as the Holy Spirit gave them utterance. The same experience is yours simply for the asking. So if you haven't received the Holy Ghost since you believe, just believe that he will fill you if you ask him, he will fill you if you have a clean life, all he wants you to do is ask for it and you will receive it. The scripture tells us, ask and ye shall receive. God bless you and God keep you.